On the 6th of June 2019, we launched our first official Atmoventus mission named TACT, or High Altitude Communication Test. We wanted to test the radio communication equipment of our Atmoventus rocket thoroughly and at the limits of its abilities. Today, we want to tell you all about our first big mission that already brought us to what by many is considered the edge of space, about what we learned and about probably one of the biggest real-life cliffhangers there is. But first things first. The planning for this mission started back in February when the Sattgruppe Langenzinn gave us word they would launch another weather balloon. For those who have never heard about it, weather balloons are big helium filled balloons that can carry weights of up to 3 kilograms and can rise to 40 kilometers altitude tops before they pop and drop whatever they carried back down to earth on a parachute. Without motors, they depend completely on the powers of nature to carry them forwards. We chose to fly with them to test our radio equipment that we later want to use in our Atmoventus rockets and a weather balloon was the perfect choice to test the reliability of our connection over long distances without the interference of obstacles like houses, hills and trees to create a comparable situation to a rocket launch. So the mission was simple on paper. We just needed to send information over the longest possible distance. We chose to send GPS information to track our balloon live so we can predict its flight direction and set up our next receiving station ahead of it. But we also would be able to calculate the actual distance between the two antennas and find out if they are a viable option for a rocket. We predicted the flight multiple times before launch, but when dealing with weather, calculations are rather vague. What makes this even worse is the fact that the weather balloon reaches a strong jet stream at about 25 kilometers that extends further up than our maximal possible altitude. This means that only a few kilometers in height difference carries the probe a further 20 to 50 kilometers, making it impossible to calculate a certain landing spot beforehand. So carrying the right equipment on board is crucial. A weather balloon probe usually consists of a styrofoam box with wings for better stability during flight and all the electronics inside. This one is ours. On the bottom right you can see a GPS and information collector. It measures the temperature, humidity and pressure outside the probe and records them together with the position on a memory card so we can recreate the flight path after landing. There are also three cameras on board. One 360 degree camera and an HD action cam for awesome footage from space and a small one connected to our hacked radio. In the right upper corner there are two GPS trackers that send the landing position of our probe via SMS to us after touchdown. We use two as one of them can always fail just to have a backup. Most of the electronics are powered by a usual power bank from Amazon. As all the electronics create quite some heat the isolating styrofoam box should be able to keep it warm enough for it to work properly even during chilling minus 60 degrees Celsius outside. And most importantly in the bottom left, our hacked mission. It is a small Raspberry Pi Zero connected to an Adafruit GPS Breakout V3 and our LoRa RFM 95W radio module. For the antenna we used a 4 wavelength long wire that connected to a rod sticks out sidewards from the probe. As our antenna sends the strongest signals perpendicular to its length, hanging it down from the bottom of the probe would have caused us to have little to no reception when standing directly underneath it, which is where we plan to be all the time. So by turning it by 90 degrees, we increase the chances of us actually receiving information from the balloon. We transported all our equipment to the launch location, the sports ground of the WBG Langenzen, where the Sattgruppe Langenzen is located, at 8 a.m. on Thursday, after finalizing and connecting the probe since 7 a.m. that day. The balloon was fooled by 9.30 and at 9.45 all strings were attached, all cameras were running, our signal flares were lit and the radio com was running.
While bumpy, the launch went well and we received GPS information till the balloon traveled 11.5 kilometers and to a height of 2.1 kilometers. At that point the probe was at an inclination of only 10.3 degrees over the horizon, so our signal was blocked by a ridge and big trees closer to our location. While the balloon picked up speed to a pace of 50 km an hour, we packed our equipment, ran a last flight prediction and set off to our first radio location north of Bamberg. After setting up our radio station there, we immediately got contact to our balloon. We received it at what must have been 10 to 20 kilometers height and we were greeted by our first live picture from high up. While blurry, as the connection wasn't stable enough to send all the packages successful, you can clearly tell apart the ground from the sky and a big white cloud in the center of the picture. What was bugging us though was that we were not getting any GPS locations, but only an error message that the GPS module on board failed to establish a position fix. Somewhere between the last message at our launch site and above Bamberg it had lost connection to the GPS satellites in orbit. We then moved on to a parking lot close to Suhl. But no matter how we tried it, we had no luck there. We decided it was the smartest not to stop while the probe was crossing the Harz Mountains, as a good reception there was very unlikely, but to post up far closer to one of the expected landing sites between Fulda and Kassel. We arrived about 4 hours after our balloon started with predicted 90 minutes till it drops from the sky and about 2 hours away from landing if the balloon did not pop below its maximum possible altitude. Only seconds after setting up our equipment there, we received the balloon clearly. Only for a few seconds, far too short for an image, but long enough to receive several GPS packages. But sadly, they were empty as well. So we only knew that our probe was still flying somewhere above us, but it failed to reconnect to any GPS satellite. We waited till we knew that the balloon must have popped and then moved on to a restaurant close by where we met up with the rest of the Sutkopet to wait for it to land so we could locate the GPS trackers inside. But the trackers stayed silent. While waiting we tried to figure out the landing site with everything we knew. The climbing speed, the locations we received a signal and maps of dead zones in the area, as that would explain the trackers not responding. We identified a 20 times 30 kilometers big area as the most likely landing zone, far too big to find it by plane looking around. Nevertheless, a few of us decided after 4 hours of waiting to drive there. We didn't really know what to expect, the likelihood of finding it was essentially zero, but we thought perhaps we could receive a signal from our equipment with some good luck or if someone finds it, we are close by and can immediately come pick it up. Sadly, the silence went on till we knew our trackers by now must have either run out of electricity or went into sleep mode, waiting for a wake-up command they can't receive where they are. We had to return home without our probe. We did not know where it went, what happened to our GPS reception. But what we did know is, our radio communication worked flawless, as we expected to never even receive anything after launch. We have our contact information on the box, so whoever finds it can message us. We can also try to make our mobile provider tell us at which radio tower the trackers tried to connect after landing, but that is a slow, paper-heavy process that will take some while. But if you want to stay updated on when we get our probe with all the amazing pictures from the stratosphere back, make sure to follow us on Facebook and subscribe. 
If you want to read up on our project at Maventus, visit our webpage. And if you want to support us with a Patreon too, where you can help us finance our future endeavors. Thanks for watching and bye bye.